Hello everyone, bringing you the Mannequin of the Month video today for September 2020. I have to say that's come around rather quickly. As usual, the topic for this has been chosen by a poll over on Patreon. The corporal tier over there get to vote on what we're going to look at each month and what's going to grace the mannequin in the back room for that month. And what we have here is a mannequin representing a private of the 3rd Infantry Division of the British Army in 1945, circa March 1945. So a move back from the Far East, which has sort of dominated recent videos, uh, to looking at uh, Northwest Europe during the Second World War, the latter months of the Second World War. At the top here, we have the Mark III steel helmet, and this is, as you can see, fitted with a helmet net. Certain units in third div, those in the initial landings in Normandy in 1944, had of course been issued the Mark III helmet, and it's common to see in photos later on as well. Uh, it certainly seems to have become more common uh, in the division uh, in the latter months of the war. So we have the Mark III helmet there, copied directly off the photograph this is referenced from. The standard uniform is worn. We do have a battle dress blouse underneath the leather jerkin here. Uh, so standard battle dress blouse and trousers, of course, would be the uniform at this time. But the leather jerkin is worn over the top for obviously, warmth. Uh, the, the winter of 44-45 was rather cold and through into the spring, it was still um, not the best weather. So the jerkin, quite commonly seen in period photographs, excellent cold weather garment, much more practical than wearing the great coat or anything like that. Uh, in terms of being able to move and so forth. Very popular and very common to see in period photographs as well. The web equipment is the standard British 1937 pattern worn in battle order as we'll see as we move this round. The two basic pouches at the front here, all very standard, as is very typical of the time. The bandolier of extra ammunition, 50 rounds of ammunition for the rifle carried over the right hand basic pouch here. Interestingly, another, we've seen previous methods of carrying the shovel in the, the videos I've done on uh, marching around the Dover Valley uh, where I carried the shovel on the back tucked behind the haversack. Another method commonly seen in photographs, very common in photos of third div around this time, is to carry the shovel at the front. The handle simply jammed down through the belt might make rotating might make rotating the mannequin around interesting. We'll see how I get on with that. But the shovel carried here um, with obviously the blade up here and the handle just jammed down through the belt. Actually quite a comfortable way of carrying it. Might make a video looking at that, the different ways that uh, that were improvised for carrying the full-size shovel with the equipment. Uh, but that's another method shown here, uh, very say, very common to see in photographs of the div of this time. That's the front of the mannequin. We'll move this around now and have a look at the left-hand side. Looking at the left-hand side of the mannequin here, you can see the profile of the Mark III helmet there, very distinct from the Mark II. We have here the divisional uh, insignia on the arm there. We don't have any other insignia. Of course, by this point, obviously colour shoulder titles, and the armour service strips would be very common. That would show the battalion within the brigades of the division. Um, obviously, the shoulder title would show, show you the specific regiment. It's very common to see amongst men of 3rd Div at this time, not the full set of insignia uh, is worn. Uh, so we just have the divisional sign here. It's been postulated this is because of men being moved around within the division. Uh, so moving from one brigade, one, one battalion to another battalion would mean you'd change brigade potentially, and obviously your position within the brigade, so the other insignia would change. It's possible that the men in those situations have removed their armoured service strips and the shoulder title, but just kept the divisional insignia after the move. Uh, that's not a definite reason for it, but certainly it shows up in period photographs, so that's what I've copied here. We have just the divisional insignia there. If we lift the arm out of the way, you can see the, the handle of the shovel coming down there, and then behind that we have the the spike bayonet for the number four rifle in a modified 1937 pattern bayonet frog there with the extra loop made in the top, uh, the extra buttonhole added in the top loop there to take the scabbard for the number four spike bayonet. So modified version of the bayonet frog there. That's everything on the left hand side. We'll move this around now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back here, we can see the haversack, of course, carried on the back in battle order. And this holds the mess tins, you know, cardigan which may actually potentially be worn at this time for extra warmth but it, if it wasn't being worn that would be in here as well cap comforter hold all and so forth the, the fairly standard contents there's no ground sheet under the flap here as you can see nor is the gas cape carried under the flap which was obviously an option instead the gas cape is ca carried tied to the back of the belt and um, we've looked at in previous videos we've looked at how this is done at this point the gas cape serving as a lightweight ground sheet and also as a waterproof as well so carried on the back of the belt there, very convenient place to carry it. It's out of the way when not being used and easy enough to remove from there and don should you need it. Underneath that, we're not carrying the entrenching tool here. So from the right hip, the water bottle has been moved around and is carried on the back from the two brace ends coming down there. Again, it's a 
comfortable place to carry it and it keeps the web equipment more, more balanced. Obviously with a full water bottle, there's a bit of weight there and this is a very comfortable place to carry it when you're not carrying the entrenching tool over the back of the equipment there. As I say, this particular setup is copied off period photographs. In the street fighting, which was common at this time, it's also very common to see the haversack dumped as well and left in transport. Uh, so you, you just see this without the haversack on the back, basically ammunition water and potentially the the gas cape as well also at this time it becomes more common to see mess tins carried in an extra water bottle carrier as well that does uh, turn up in period photographs on occasion as well just another thing you'll see at the time but i've got this set up in battle order still with the haversack we'll move this around now and have a look at the right hand side there's not a whole lot more to see on the right hand side here again we have the divisional formation sign there on the arm if we lift this out of the way you can see the bandolier round on the uh, underneath the basic pouch there, carrying extra extra 303 ammunition uh, bandolier of 50 rounds there. Obviously the water bottle has been moved around to the back so that's no longer carried on the hip. Uh, so not a huge amount more to see there but that is the right hand side of the mannequin. So there we are, that was the mannequin of the month for September of 2020. If you found that interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're new to subscribing or you've previously subscribed please do make sure you hit the little bell down below, the little notification button that will alert you when I upload future videos. If you'd like the opportunity to vote on the Mannequin of the Month topic going forward, check out Patreon, uh, there's a link to that down below. And a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel, both using Patreon and PayPal, both of which are linked down below. As ever guys, a massive thank you to you for your support over there. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can, there's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all linked down below. And as usual, there will be photographs of this up on there as well, if you'd like a slightly more detailed look at it. If you'd like to make contact but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down below as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, so until next time, bye for now.